Okay, thanks. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thanks for the um, you know, attending the latest session. So this will consist of two parts, and we will go with a lecture to introduce a little bit, a little bit background and uh, some concepts associated with the app, our new package on seismic phase picking, uh, you know, detection and picking. And then we will play around with the uh, tutorials and to see how it works. Um, and first, I want to uh, introduce a little bit about myself. So I'm currently a fourth year PhD student, fourth year PhD student at Harvard, and I'm working with Marine on ambient noise monitoring and also building up some uh, machine learning, the models of processing earthquake data, especially for earthquake early warning. And uh, you, I think everybody already know, and if you attended the, uh, the early session, and so Ivy um, is a second year PhD student uh, at the University of Washington. We are at the same uh, group, and he's particularly interested in high performance, um, you know, sense, uh, their computing in seismology. So to begin with, I want to um, to talk about their initiation and motivation behind why, uh, why we need a uh, accurate phase picket and to do the, you know, the measurements. And in this context for the earthquake early warning, so their quick response is very important. You need to know on site of the earthquake signal to allow for their estimation on earthquake location and also the late processing on the magnitude estimation and also the ground motion intensity estimation so that you can give the information to the public as soon as possible. It also have other benefits and uh, like, um, you know, to do uh, the monitoring on the nuclear tests and also um, the travel time based imaging and the tomography. And you, you can also name it, I think you're familiar with um, the related applications. So the, the field of the face picking is pretty active and so when we have the digital seismograms and we need uh, some algorithm to help to process data and the face, um, face picker and this typical one is STA or LT. I think most of you already know the, about this. And um, I think it probably and uh, you know, it's programming and how to realize it. Um, so this one and uh, even there are some others and I mean developed but this is still employed in the most of the, um, the systems of the process seismic data, uh, even today. Um, so it's very stable, but it also has uh, its limitations and when dealing with the noise and signal is, uh, and also the S wave, uh, the peaking. So in the today and uh, it's big data and uh, this arrow, and uh, we are facing the dramatic growth of uh, so many instruments and uh, long-term recording. And so we really need one, um, you know, the efficient and a reliable picker and to realize automated the processing workflow. So this is a reason uh, why machine learning is so attractive because it's already demonstrated its power for um, the performance and the in the fields of uh, computer um, vision and also the language processing. So, <laughs> Since uh, 2018, uh, there are some like the pretty powerful, um, the machine learning based, uh, the face picker have been developed to process the data. Among them, I think some of you have used or um, know about the FaceNet and Aerospace Transformer because they uh, have shown their, you know, their, their power and in dealing with their data and have been widely used in uh, various um, the applications. There are also some others, and I'm not list all of them. And uh, I think in future, and with the development of the machine learning, the neural network, and uh, the algorithm, there should be more uh, where uh, show up. But alongside, um, we also have the lot of the data sets, and to enhance the performance of these data driven uh, the models. Um, so one of them I want to really highlight is SenseBench, uh, 
a great platform and um, you know provide us with uh, all acceptable links and to different data sets and also help us to do some uh, benchmark and uh, uh, you know generate a lot of the pre-trained models. And with so many uh, pre-trained models, um, I think some of us are pretty happy because we have so many great options and we can do benchmarking and do transfer learning um, then to make it adjustable and to your case. Um, this is great, uh, but some of us, I think, are getting confused and because we actually don't have the idea and how to do, uh, you know, to make a choice and how they, uh, they don't want to actually do the first pro uh, processing like transfer learning um, before really using the learn. So those are, I think the response are reasonable and, um, and this give a rise to some questions and we are facing um, the first one is how to combine these available models and uh, very effectively and we, we want to avoid any like processing, uh, avoid um, the any choice. And the second one is how to develop uh, uh, like so only one model, like um, artificial general intelligence and a very ideal model and but for sense knowledge. And uh, well, then we can uh, really trust it and to process all of the tasks and we uh, we're face. So I think the both uh, the the questions are, um, uh, um, you know, to wear some like the uh, the future and uh, development the uh, paths. And today we want to answer and is any possible to combine all of the uh, the available models and to, into uh, the one, and then we can rely on to uh, do some uh, the prediction works. So that's the reason and the way uh, develop ALP. ALP stands for um, Ensemble Learning for earthquake Processing. For now, specifically for earthquake based uh, detection and picking, it's a lightweight framework and for improving earthquake detection and picking uh, by combining multiple base predictions into the only one. It has following features, um, but um, uh, I will and go most of them in the following slides. So, Here's a very short outline about the, the rest of the lecture. And I will briefly introduce the structure of ALERP and show you some uh, simple uh, examples and also a short demo for uh, you know, how a continuous waveform is tested. And then should be your time and um, to make it, uh, to perform your tests and uh, play around with the uh, with ALERP with this package. And um, before really and um, diving into the tutorials, and I also have the last uh, slide and to claim some like uh, future improvements and we are, uh, we are working on. And also we, we really want, we welcome the you know, feedbacks from you. Okay, so about uh, the framework, um, as you see, it's uh, pretty simple and it consists of the four parts. Um, you have the signal input, you have the base model uh, loading and uh, the with predictions, and then followed by ensemble estimations and some predictions, and then you will have the final result as output. So we are, uh, we highly appreciate the sense bench already provide and uh, so many uh, the choices and base models and also help to train the pre-trained models. As you see, uh, the you know class uh, I think is very powerful, like the uh, neural network architectures, FaceNet, GPT, or a screen transformer. And each of them has uh, so many, like the, the pre-trained models, um, you know, it's giving uh, the, the different data sets uh, to train there. Uh, then, so each pre-trained model will have the, uh, the result. So, um, so how, to, how to do the prediction? So the, for, the, the, the first core part is to, um, to do the prediction and it will be given two options and they're either broadband or the model band. So I think you already guessed that the model band is just uh, you know, performs prediction in multiple uh, frequency bands. So then if we, you know, upon you have you know, so many like the prediction results, the question comes and how to combine all of them into the final one you, you want, right? So um, it, this is the core part, uh, the second core part, sample estimations. Uh, it consists of uh, two small parts. The first uh, is uh, you have the two options to do the simple ensemble estimations. This will serve as a trigger 
you know, the OV or later on uh, the ensemble learning. Um, so you, you will use that to identify, to confirm this is a signal, then trigger it to later on to make a uh, refinement on the prediction. So we will, I mean, uh, describe and each of them and uh, very uh, explicitly. So the first one is about the base predictions. Um, so uh, you here I show that two like two prediction workflows, and the broadband is pretty straight uh, forward. It's end to end prediction. You have the signal input, and then you will input to um, the deep learning model, for instance, and uh, the earthquake transformer. And this will give you a prediction with three channels and respectively for detection, P phase picking, S phase picking uh, tasks. And if you look at the second, the workflow, and you can see they has two additional two steps and the time frequency representation and also the probabilities. Uh, I will show you in how exactly it work. Uh, so here's an example. Supposing you have a, a three components as more gram. Uh, the first thing and you need to do is to decom uh, signal composition. And so here you need to define the, how many you know, the frequency bands you want to do filtering, right? So we, we consider um, considering the balance between the computation cost and also the um, prediction performance. And we uh, select 10, um, you know, so here as a criteria of the uh, you know, band, the number. And um, for example, we have the Z uh, signal and then we will filter it uh, into the 10 frequency bands, pretty simple, right? So then you will have the 10, the filter signals and sure in here's the time and the frequency um, domain and to see how, how how to look. Um, then you were using the exact same uh, the model as uh, for um, the broadband prediction um, without any further training uh, because this model already trained with a large data set, uh, data set and already see so many signals with uh, different dominant frequencies. So it will uh, uh, do this job pretty good. So it will do uh, uh, intuitively or in parallel and uh, to uh, make the predictions of all of the 10 uh, filtered signals. So um, then each signal we have is their own uh, prediction. Then uh, in total, we will have the 10 predictions. And that's the reason we will see the many traces in the different task detection and P phase picking and S phase picking. So the questions comes and uh, you have the so many uh, results and uh, how, to, how to get the final one. So here we simply uh, define an optimal function as the uh, one trace and with the highest probability, uh, which will be regarded as the uh, best one. So we can see this highlight, uh, you know, color lines and uh, which uh, have actually the highest probability. Then we, uh, you know, compare the results of the optimal results and in the right bottom of uh, the panel, and uh, compare them and with the dashed lines and from broadband predictions. And the first I think you can uh, sense is um, uh, the multiple band optimal prediction has higher probability compared to the, you know, the dashed lines and especially for the S phase. And also, and it seems um, clear, cleaner and because it don't have the, these kind of artifacts appeared in, uh, you know, uh, in the broadband prediction. And uh, to some extent, this may uh, potentially, I mean, reduce uncertainty or the uh, prediction error. Um, so the reason behind why multiple band uh, can help, um, you know, a lot, uh, that's the reason. And you, you filter this signal to 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 multiple frequency bands, which allow the uh, deep learning model to recognize uh, some signals uh, maybe is more familiar and to the model to make a higher. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the prediction result. Um, this uh, gives the enhancer, um, you know, the prediction, uh, the capability, um, because um, not just uh, like the broadband, and uh, you, you're probably not familiar with, and you only have the, only one chance and to make the prediction. And then here, and we have the 10 chances. So uh, that's the reason, and, um, you know, the, uh, the deep learning model and uh, can uh, have the more chances and to um, 
make a good uh, you know, prediction. Okay, this is pretty much about you know, the, um, the prediction workflows. And I wanna see an amount of band and prediction and uh, we cost more, but we will you know, optimize this part and to have the better uh, the efficiency. efficiency. Um, then we will go to the ensemble uh, estimations, right? So you each pre-chain model, you will have a kind of the result and uh, you will have actually multiple the pre-chain models. Uh, you, then you will have a lot of the result together, right? So here, and because the ensemble estimation only works for picking, so here just to show the P phase, uh, the uh, uh, you know, prediction results and also the S phase prediction. So you can see the prediction index means the um, the number of the pre-treat uh, the model. And uh, here we have the six uh, pre-treat models from uh, earthquake transformer and uh, another six and based on the GPD. So in total, we have uh, a 12, the models or results and here. And uh, those and the deep column means, um, means higher probability and is the same and for the S. So the thing I think comes again, then how to combine them and to the, to the final one. So the first very beginning idea came into my mind is, and how about just using, you know, the exact same way like we did for uh, broadband. We just take the maximum one and the, you know, as a final result. So this is very uh, broad, like the uh, choice. And uh, you, because it may invite a lot of the noise and also, uh, you know, incur some like the false positives. But the good thing is it's always give you a result if there's some like the high probability uh, appear in the prediction, then you will, you will have uh, high peaking rates. So um, with the threshold as a dash line, and this will be triggered as a, regard as a signal, then trigger the um, learning based the ensemble estimation, and we will talk about later. So we also provide some other statistical based estimations, and uh, and I think we should develop more. And here just uh, uh, some uh, simple choices. So more conservative choice is to do semblance. So semblance and is uh, try to measure um, measure the continuity across different um, prediction results. It is uh, it was originally. Uh, proposed by um, the Marford um, so in 1998 to detect boundaries, horizons, and the faults and the seismic profiles and for interpretation. So we uh, make some like some modifications and two modifications and in the enhanced version and try to suppress the noise. Uh, so we add the, the weights and by taking the maximum probability and we also have the power of two and to uh, enhance the um, the signal um, to some extent. So we get the signals here and uh, overall and the, the level of the coherence actually is lower than the probability. So when you do the detection, actually you can lower a little bit uh, your threshold to allow the, the trigger, triggering. So it has a, um, a pretty obvious advantage because um, um, which is um, it where uh, has has lower like the, the first positive rate because it's always need a, a strong agreement be, between different the uh, prediction models. Um, but it's uh, it's pitfall is um, is it's a you know the relative uh, to the um, maximum one and it has a lower picking rate. So you will see that later. Okay, so um, with the threshold, you will trigger the um, you know ensemble learner, and uh, which is a very simple like uh, convolution neural network. So we were the first, and we have the result, and we have the reference picker, and we can truncate and uh, you know to clear out with the uh, into a smaller the window. Then we um, we will input the the matrix or image and to the neural network, and it's uh, just a simple, a simple model with um, you know four convolutional uh, blocks and uh, additional uh, three polyconnected layers, and the whole process will be regarded as a regression problem. 
So you have the image input, then you will output as a single value, TPRTS. So we will do uh, the predictions and for TPRTS as, uh, individually. So this idea actually inspired by banking or stanking ensemble learning. And uh, uh, this method has been widely um, used in uh, statistics or other related the fields. And so the banking, the, the idea behind is uh, the bootstrap aggregation. So you, you have a large data set and you will split it to the smaller uh, bags. Then each one will have, a, you know, we treat the model and it's just sim similar to the pre-trained model. And you will have the multiple pre-trained models. And uh, then you will have the final one like our uh, CNN and here, then you can combine them together uh, then to, to make the you know, better choice uh, on their final prediction. Um, but it's a little bit different from uh, the idea of banking, the stanking just to use uh, the multiple base uh, the models, not like the, the banking sample and based on the same uh, base model. And you have some multiple models, like we have uh, FaceNet, uh, uh, GPD and the earthquake transformer and also uh, error or other models and together you can use them and to do the prediction as well and you can have another additional mental learner and then uh, you know to make all of the results into the final one so similar idea and we use the uh, CRN as a mental learner and to do the final prediction so it has some like the advantage and especially when you encounter uh, with the low probabilities or some like inconsistency and between different pre uh, predicted uh, results. So I will show you in the examples. And also um, it's uh, downside is, um, you know, it's very hard and for, it, for, for, for this model and to identify non phases noise or maybe other, you know, the complicated uh, the artifacts. Um, and it's always returned with one single value and, uh, and it cannot, I mean, work for multiple events. But uh, the things that we have the short window, we can slide actually based on the detections and from previous and simple and sample estimations. Okay. Um, this is pretty much about ensemble estimations. And now, and we already go through uh, the two core parts. And uh, here I will show you some uh, simple, uh, you know, the examples. And uh, from you know this high core data into the low core data, and uh, let's see and how they works. And I will show the all of the prediction results at each step, and we have their dash analyzed and here and are the uh, the human peaks or the labels. And uh, those the below the six are the from the uh, the pre treated predictions, and uh, the blue for the P and uh, green for S. Um, and you can see, and for this pretty good, um, the signal and the, uh, I mean, each one can, can do a pretty good job. So this uh, a result into uh, a, a pretty good results and for the simple ensemble estimations as well. And also our ensemble learn, uh, learner and also did a pretty good job. Um, so um, if, especially for the S phase and it's getting worse and worse and you can see the probabilities and from pre-treated models, they behave and quite differently and we are in count some low probabilities. And you can see here, the stud um, becomes lower. And, um, and here is totally like the, the offset and uh, for the S, but uh, for the, from the P, but I think the label is not right uh, if you see the signals here. But especially, you know, for the, for the, for the lower three examples, you can see some actually, already miss um, their predictions, uh, especially for this one. And uh, it's pretty low and it's very hard to make a decision. I think you have the threshold is already filled out those uh, the prediction results. So um, that's the reason why we, we have the ensemble learning, uh, the learner, the model, and it can handle some situations like this. Um, So I would say, and uh, if we use ensemble sample and send as trigger, and for example, for this, for this, and if uh, um, this, and because you know all of the pre-trained models are feared, um, and uh, uh, so their maximum or 
resemblance, these simple ensemble estimations are fair as well. Uh, but you have the picked as a P, right? So you can, you know, the use um, the results as also input and for the for the S wave the model, then to place the final prediction. So you also can have a result from uh, the ensemble learning the model. Um, yeah, so that is uh, one advantage. And um, if you don't have the confidence, but the ensemble learning can uh, help you to make a you know decision. It's pretty much about the uh, you know the uh, some like event waveforms, and we also um, we also uh, done a statistic uh, like the analysis on the entire data set, but focus on the PNW uh, Pacific non spanned data set. Uh, this is a cured, uh, cur cur curated the data set for machine learning, uh, you know, training use, and it just came out. The paper just came out. Um, so EU is the first author, um, and it uh, includes like four, about forty four thousand earthquake and implosion events. Um, so it's about like um, uh, one hundred and eighty thousand seismograms, and plus additional uh, five point six thousand exotic events. So if somebody interested in on the surface events and it's probably a great the you know the resource and to start with. Um, so we will use this data to, to look at and uh, you know overall the um, the performance. We will start to look at the broadband and the smart broadband prediction. So I I released some like uh, main points here um, before showing the figures. So multiple band detects and uh, peaks at least 10% more than broadband uh, does. And just multiple band is peaking accuracy is a little bit um, the higher than the broadband. And um, so for both broadband as multiple band, S phase peaking errors are larger than the P phase. Um, and it's prediction the performance is overall increasing with the signal noise ratio because we will see the result, um, you know, the distributed over different qualities. Okay, here are the result. So we have the three uh, tasks, detection, P-phase picking, and S-phase picking. Uh, so here are the different symbols uh, represent different prediction models. Um, the green um, represent the result from broadband, colored, and from the multiple band. So you can see uh, the overall different, you know, the signal noise ratio groups, and you can see how they converge. And, uh, but it's general, and we can see uh, the multiband band and uh, achieve a pretty good uh, performance and in terms of detection rate. And also for the P peaking uh, rate and S peaking rate um, is similar. Um, so uh, multiband band and behave uh, pretty like stable and over different um, signal ratio, um, the signals. And also if we look at the uh, P phase peaking, the arrows and also S phase peaking arrows, we can see, sorry, the, the red ones and the represent is, uh, the multiple band result. So you can see the more folks and uh, not like the broadband, the, the results and the more scattered, and especially for the S phase, the, the arrow. Uh, so we can see uh, that um, the multiple band actually uh, predict uh, the results and with uh, uh, some like the higher uh, accuracy. Okay, so we also, Look at the sample estimations and compare uh, the results and with the transfer learning uh, the model. Um, so the first and I want to um, give some notes and about the the data training. Uh, so we used about twenty four point six percent, you know, to train their sample learner. Um, I would say and it's uh, the the result actually uh, is pretty stable and we tried different data sets but. Um, uh, it's it's uh, you know it's quite uh, robust uh, and it's uh, trained is pretty fast. Um, another thing about the uh, transfer learning part, we use actually use seventy percent of the entire dataset and to train to get a pretty good uh, 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 transfer learning model. So uh, for the task in dataset, um, you know, sure in this figure, um, actually the transfer learn learn model already being is posted into the data set. So most of the data are being already be seen uh, by the transfer learning model. So that's a reason I think that for now and the transfer learning model represents the highest level 
uh, in prediction. So like I said, if we recall uh, like some parts in the framework and we need um, the two parts and for ensemble estimation, and we need to uh, choose a simple one as a trigger and another one as a, the refiner, right? So, so the, here the, the left re represents the, the integration between uh, the ensemble maximum and uh, uh, then plus the ensemble learner. So right end is uh, the combination between ensemble samplers and the ensemble learner. So we compare the results with the transfer learned one. So the golden colors um, is golden, the markers and the represented result from transfer learning. If you look at the left part, we take the maximum one, it has a pretty high like the picking rate. Um, can see and uh, more than the transfer learning. Um, and, but it's errors, uh, I think it's higher because there's a, a lot, lot of uncertainties I think happened in the low quality data. And uh, with the ensemble learning, and you can see the errors will be reduced a lot, especially for the low quality data. And it's approaching to the performance of uh, transfer learning. And for the, for the right hand, um, so the so ensemble semblance actually is more conservative and it's a uh, it's, uh, you know, speaking rate, it's not that high than the transfer learning, especially for the low quality data. Um, if you look at the, uh, the picking errors actually, and it's uh, lower than the transfer learned. So it's, uh, it's a pretty uh, interesting to see, even without transfer learning, only with the pre trained models, and we can find a way and to outperform uh, the transfer learning. And, uh, I would say for the picking rate, it's not always case like here. And in our continuous test that uh, we'll let you know, and uh, you know, ensemble samplers actually can, can outperform um, the transfer learned model in terms of the picking rate. Okay, so here I show you um, the short demo to see and how uh, you know, continuous data work. Um, so we have a continuous data here and we have a, uh, a window, the red window, and we will, um, you know, it's every 30 seconds, and we will do a prediction. And uh, here, the, uh, this is a 60 seconds along the window, the standard uh, entry for all the models. Uh, so we have the pre model, the predictions, and uh, they already overlap together. Um, and we have the two simple uh, uh, estimation methods, and one is maximum, and another is uh, sampling. Uh, so we use a semblance one, um, you know, as a trigger, and then and followed by the prediction by the sample learner. So we will go through this, uh, you know, the we will not run all of the uh, the data, and we will go through this event, and we see and uh, you know the what, what it look like and in continuous uh, the testing. So you see, and there are lots actually a lot of the artifacts or noise, and it's here. Um, and uh, if you use the ensemble maximum, um, then it will trigger this noise, right? So if you use the semblance, actually, um, the, they are largely suppressed because it has a high requirement. But for the signal and it's up here, um, so we, we use, uh, we, we actually use this, the ensemble semblance, and we have the short window. Um, then we, uh, Shows here. Sorry, to pass a little. Pass forward. Witness here. Yeah. So we have the background actually the um the predictions from prediction model, and uh, as input. So background is input, and as a dash utilizer uh, the prediction from ensemble learning. Okay. So um. Yeah. So we we also uh you know, do this and for, um, for the, have the two additional, like um, the continuous tests and for the one borehole the station and with the clean signals um, and another for surface station. So here is uh, like about four hours uh, long, like this, uh, you know, continuous data. And you can see some like the small events, um, those. So, um, Mm. So the first then we would do the same thing, um, but we visualize them and in, uh, in the two parts and for the P-phase picking and S-phase picking. 
So you can see um, we have the pre-trained models and the, the, all of the results. And uh, we also have the transfer learned the, the uh, you know, result. And if we use the maximum, you can see it, it probably, I mean, detected all of the events, but it also incurred a lot of noise. Um, but if you look at it in sample samples, and uh, we can see um, it's not that perfect, but it uh, detects actually uh, two more than the transfer uh, model. If you look at the, uh, the surface event and in the same the period, and the surface, uh, this is a closer, like the station but, uh, on the surface, and you can see a lot of the events are already hitting the noise. Um, amazingly, and uh, you know, prediction models can always can give some like the predictions, but as and is not that good. Um, a transfer learned also uh, give uh, its own prediction, but only detects one event, this larger one, and it also miss this one. Um, and even we use a pretty low like threshold and to to make the you know, detection. But uh, interestingly, if you look at the sample samplers, it actually detects uh, four events, and some of them and uh, you know are the exactly the same as the previous one. So actually, this um, you know these two. So this is very interesting. Um, we we not really. Um, necessarily relying on the transfer learn uh, learn model and perhaps and we can find some ways and to wait uh, the transfer learning and by just using pre-trained models and to make the final prediction to get a good result okay so uh, then we will go to uh, you know the tutorials but before um, I want to um, this is a link and you can you can look at our github uh, page and uh, here's our view of the all all of the tutorials and i will responsible for um you know guide you and go through the broadband and multi band prediction one and also two simple and sample estimation methods and we also give the tutorial on meta learner training part but this is pretty simple one and uh, um, because we we don't have you know this pretty like the if we give a larger data set and this we cause some problems so uh, we just to give a shot, uh, the, the small data set you can play around with the training, but this is pretty simple, the training process. And also we have uh, other, you know, the, um, the tutorials and focusing on the, uh, just the, there's some like figures I showed you before and on the 100, the window, the events and also to continuous data. So I will work with you and to guide you and to go through all of the tutorials. Okay, so for the environment, and we choose a collab, and because it's simple, I think it's uh, some of you are already quite familiar with this, and because you already perform on the on, on money, um, and also you can you know follow the instructions and on the GitHub page and to set up your own local environment. Um, okay, so before we dive in, uh, dive into the tutorials, and we I I want to like uh, claim some uh, improvements, and we will do in future. And we will enhance the sample learner and by training it on a large data set. And also in cooperate the uncertainty estimates and along with the travel times and by um, um, developing a probabilistic neural network. And also we will expand the range of the spotted the import ships and it, uh, increase the entry flexibility. Currently just limited to six base predictions and uh, also optimize you know, multiple band filtering because it's uh, for now it takes uh, so much time, um, and also you know in, in parallel um, you know the scripts, um, and we really want to I mean uh, display the real time the processing results and you know in some like you know, the local environments for some small um, uh, tasks, and uh, I hope all of you and can uh, give a shirt a shirt and uh, to try them out, and you know the. With this test, I think you will probably have some um, the feedbacks on our package, and we always welcome uh, welcome like the uh, different contributions, um, you know, including the report box and uh, request features post the functions. Um, so uh, yeah, so I think uh, in near future we will prepare a more comprehensive documentation and to explain every part of the this package. Yeah, so that's um, is pretty much about the lecture part. 
So, sorry, I, I, Okay, so you can, excuse me. It's, um, the rice is hard to do. So you can um, open your browser and uh, Sorry, I only have one monitor, so it's uh, hard to implement. So just uh, you know the Google Colab, and um, then open it. Um, then click GitHub and put their link here to that package. Uh, sorry, I think it is just here. So. Yeah, so uh, you can simply type. Um, with this, um, then we see the um, notebooks, and uh, let's um, try this at first. So this is just a simple example to show you um, the how the broadband and band prediction uh, predictions work and uh, also the difference between them. Uh, so it's a brief outline. And again, so you need to uh, restart uh, your runtime um, because of the collab, uh, sorry, the, uh, the obvious point. Um, so we choose a collab, uh, we just do, think the wrong anyway. Okay, so we I think if we, we install the sense bench, we already have the compute environment. Um, but also you need to in, uh, install uh, the app and to have all of the functions uh, we need. Yeah, I think I need to restart it. Um, okay, either you need to run again or just clip here and to restart the runtime. I think either way can work. Um, I should run it again. <laughs> Yeah, please reach out. And if you uh, couldn't find the tutorials and um, you encounter any issues and when you're running this. Okay. Um, then we import all of the packages and functions. McDonald's data. Okay, so here there, you know, simple signal is good one, and you can try some others. And um, if you know, um, here just to, you know give you a demonstration of how it works. Um, so after loading the signals and you need to load the models, and the sense bench already give the uh, the options because here and we compare the broadband and band. Uh, so we tried there, you know, three basic like the models. Um, so the first time you should download them, uh, then you can form with them. But it should be fast. Okay, then you will do the prediction and exactly the way and uh, on the sense bench.
Okay, so the broadband prediction is pretty fast. Um, then we show the, uh, you know, the predictions. It's the predictions. Uh, the business is not bad. Um, it's not bad. Okay, then you will do the multiple band prediction. And um, the thing that you need to do at first is to um, define a dictionary and for multiple band filtering. So the key parameters here is a number of frequency bands um, and also this, but uh, this can be, you know, the, the default um, parameters and they use the key here and to build up a dictionary then will be passed into uh, yeah, later, later on. So here is just uh, to get the dictionary done, all of the parameters you use. Um, okay, so uh, this is pretty fast. Then you will generate a stream for sense band prediction. So we, um, because we have the 10 frequency bands, right? So here, and then the first then create an empty string, then we will do the uh, filtering. So it, after each filtering, you will append uh, the trace, this object and to the string. Then you will have the multiple, like the frequency bands, the signals inside, and for the following the prediction. Okay, we're done then. We will do the uh, you know, prediction just the exactly the same way as before. It may take some time um, because you have uh, 10 fixed events. So at least uh, you know, the 10 times longer than the root band prediction. But I think in future we will optimize this part and for speeding up. Um, okay, you're done. It's not that bad, but uh, if you have uh, a lot of the traces, probably it's an issue. Um, so now you will visualize your results. So this is all the, the results and the face net and uh, you know, the GPT and uh, the earthquake transformer. And here's uh, the text and uh, means the, the which one. I think this is uh, the fourth one. The first one is the best and for the earthquake transformer. I have the best result. And for FaceNet, it is the second one. Okay, they have the different preferences. Um, and also for GPT, the eighth one. Anyways, this is pretty much about the, you know, the upper band. But if you look at and the uh, results actually, uh, for different uh, beta signals, the performance is actually different. Um, this is just a pretty good signals, and especially when you count you know, pretty noisy in the signals and things multiband can have the better performance. Um, so but I'm not sharing, sharing that here. Okay, so uh, then we will jump into another tutorial. Um, I need to, yeah, you can simply, I think, open the notebook and then GitHub, then the path skill here, you can choose another one. This uh, name is um, simple, you know, the example and simple and simple. Then you click, we'll go to another one. Yeah, let us know and if you, you encounter any questions. Um, okay, so here, this one, and just to show you, uh, you know how to simple and simple estimations work. So at um, machine is a lecture, and we have the uh, you know maximum mind the samples. Um, the first step is pretty annoying. Uh, so it's you need to uh, set up your 
environment again. Probably you wouldn't need to reinstall since you just jumped from one notebook to this one and the runtime didn't change. Since I think I so, yeah, it's still in change. We can try it out. Good. Yeah, we can try. Uh, it, it doesn't change? Yeah, it's good. I think you restart, you already restarted the runtime when you, you know, the open a new fire, right? Yeah, we can, I can try it. No, this cannot work. So you should restart again. Um, so all of the environment, I think, will be initiated. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, you just simply click again. Um, then, so load functions. Okay, uh, here we go. Yeah, the same signal. Um, um, the first that let, let list out our available Christian models. So this is for different base um, architecture. They have there so many Christian models. Um, I think this is pretty hard to make choice. Um, it's not um, means, and if you choose one closer to your study region, that means that is best one. So the, there is no like the uh, the standard or the critical rules and to guide you to choose uh, which one should be, you know, the best. So that's the reason we need um, combine them and into into one. So you have the I just randomly choose the the six. Um, because I, think I didn't test all of them. I just choose the six um, that I want. Uh, so uh, we also tried you know, for the FaceNet and the GPD and the Earthquake Transformer. Um, but in the, the test, tests and it shows you an earlier based on the Earthquake Transformer. So you can, you can load them all. It may take some time, but uh, it should be fine. Um, in the last two, two minutes. Sorry. In real case, and it's not necessary. I mean, you um, you get all of them, and um, so for our case, I we already show you, and the six pre-treated model already done a pretty good job. Um, I think if we incorporate more, um, probably we you will get a better result. Um, but if you like the GPD and you have a lot of the artifacts, probably will degrade your your performance. Um, but we already see on that on this signal and the face net and the earthquake transformer done pretty nice job. So if you combine both, then it should be uh, if it should be better. Um, okay, so after loading, um, 
uh, download, then you will do the prediction. The prediction should be fast. Here we only we only do for broadband prediction because multiple band and will take a long much longer time. Okay. Um, then we visualize the results. Yeah, so you will see the, all of the results. So like I said, um, the face net actually um, it's beautiful, but the GBD ending, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, artifacts. Um, earthquake transformer uh, is fine. So yeah. Um, then you will do the sample estimation uh, based on the all of the, you know, um, predictions. So here we just do for the face net, we separately and dump for face net and uh, also a screen transformer. We think the GPT, um, you know, is, um, we will not do for it because it, um, it's not that good. Um, yeah, so the first end you will, you know, load uh, all of the, you give a list of all of the predictions and from face net, the, Prediction models, and then you you extract the uh, the data, uh, which are you know predictions uh, for P and S. Then you will do ensemble maximum, and in the nexus here. So you, the first then you should define a dictionary for it, and you have the data. Then you will uh, return with the with the final trace and by combining, you know, he's just the extract the, the, the best, uh, you know, the maximum one. Um, yeah, here the result. Then the semblance and uh, it's a little bit um, um, more complicated. And um, so you, you have the semblance order and uh, you have a window and, um, you know, to, to do the smoothing. And the semblance window in here is uh, 0.5, and uh, the weight, and we use the max. So it's uh, um, we already tried with this and on the all of the tests, and we think this is a great default, you know, setup. Um, I think it's a conf configuration and now it's good and for semblance, and so we we just use this and for this test. Um, but you can play around with the, those different parameters to see and how the performance change. Uh, with different setup, so you can see, and it is for the face net. Um, um, and also, all right, what is it? Yeah, this, this is just to compare, you know, the appreciate uh, the predictions and the weight with ensemble maximum and the semblance, but this on, on, on only for P face to just to give a direct. Uh, you know, the comparison between different models or methods. Okay, so uh, after finishing for P, uh, then we also need to do it for S. Um, so just to run it quickly, and that is S. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so that is for FaceNet. Um, so here is for a screen transformer. So exactly the same way. So I think you can just, you know, run all of the cells and it should be, um, Done pretty fast. So there's some of the artifacts you can see here. Um, but the good thing is the maximum one and uh, doesn't uh, you know have those. Uh, but in some cases may have these artifacts because you just uh, um, bodily I mean take the maximum of one. But for samplings and we are uh, suppress these artifacts. Um, Okay, so this is that for P and here's for S. Yeah, so um, I think the results is great. Um, so this is just a thing case and you can uh, make it more challenging and um, you know, uh, just download some of uh, the, uh, the waveforms you already know um, and play around with the algorithms. Yeah, that's pretty much and for you know the broadband and multiband 
and also this tutorial focuses on the two simple and simple uh, estimation methods. And if, if you have any question or encounter or come across any, any issues on the tutorial, please, I mean, reach out to us and, or any like confusion. Um, yeah, we are happy, I mean, to resolve those for you. Okay, so I think if you, you don't have question and we'll hand it over to uh, you and uh, you know, for the rest of the tutorials. Okay, uh, I will stop in the sharing. Thanks, Sunso. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'll leave uh, here for the further one and a half minutes for any questions in the Slack channel. Um, after that, I will start it, uh, other two or three notebooks, um, introducing, uh, the deployment of this method, um, uh, as a new data set, um, and also on the continuous data. Let me first share my screen. Maybe. Um, yeah, before that, uh, the data set we're going to use is this Pinda Pacific Northwest um, curated seismic data set. Uh, it's a curated, uh, it's a 21 years of data set, um, mostly uh, curated by the analyst from Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Uh, yeah, we are getting this uh, earthquakes and surface event, exotic events, um, making it as a public available data set. The paper just published just yesterday or two days ago on Seismica. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice try to, ha to have this such publication with a open access journal, which is pretty nice. Okay, so I'll just start it on a new notebook. So if you are running the tutorial from Tonto, um, please leave, uh, have their, keep their open and we can switch to another open uh, notebook in the same directory. Uh, if you still click the open notebook open, um, or you can just create a new collab tab. Um, there is a example. Um, BB stands for broad broadband and window data uh, pinned up. Well, this is a notebook we are going to use. Um, yeah, so we are going to use this uh, face picking plan, uh, workflow on the Pacific Northwest seismic data set. Um, before that, I still need to Unfortunately, you need to install everything from scratch. It may take a, a minute, hopefully. Looks good. No compatibility problem. Mm. Okay, looks good. So, still a remind reminder: we need to restart the runtime. Um, and time uh, if we're we we need to use OpSpy. Um, basically started, restarted and skips the pip store and you can import everything in, in this single block, maybe. Yep. Here we're import some of the functions we define in this add up um, packages. 
Um, there's also a CUDA visible device just in case you are running this notebook on your uh, local machine um, that has CUDA supported. Um, on, on this co Google Colab, we just simply define Torch device as CPU um, since um, obviously Google Colab, Colab is not providing, uh, uh, actually they are providing GPUs, but I'm not using at this moment. Uh, you can also try to use CUDA if you have uh, want a better performance. But this, since this is simply a toy program, um, we don't see any. Uh, actually, we don't see much performance uh, enhancement, like accelerated um, um, switching from CPU to code, uh, CUDA in this notebook. Okay, so uh, we're using this wget. Uh, to get the waveforms, um, it's um, it's stored in HDF5 format, and also the metadata. Basically, it stores uh, um, the the pigs um, when the pig uh, is made, the time, the station, and some of the uncertainty of these pigs are um, polarity if applied. Um, we can. Try to take a look at how this data set looks like. So we're getting the data from this data bucket. Mm, it has it's a matrix of shape one hundred, uh, three and six thousand. So the first dimension one hundred simply means that we are having one hundred um, sam uh, traces samples in this toy program, and each of this stream is three component. And we're including 60, uh, 60 seconds of the waveform sampling at 100 hertz. And mostly these are from the like station EH channel, HH channel, BH channel, or simply resampled to 100. And there are some of the um, pre processing we're performing. For example, um, this data set has a channel order of uh, ENZ, uh, East east west in the first dimension uh, in uh, north south in second and vertical in the third um but for s transformer uh, how it being trained we pre preferred switch it to the right order um to get a better performance uh, for example we are here switch it to uh, vertical first north south and east west um we demean the waveform and taper taper it on both sides of the waveform and there's some filtering. Um, notice that depends on the pre-trained model being used, uh, the normalization method is kind of different. Um, for example, the original weights from the suspension is using the standard STD normalization, while other pre-trained model is using this maximum normalization method. Here, I'm just uh, calculating both pre-trained, uh, pre-processed, uh, pre-processing data. So after the pre-processing, this waveform is still the same shape. Uh, let's just randomly plot some of them. Um, for here, it's showing uh, 3,000. Uh, yeah, not the full waveform, but only the 3,000 uh, data sample. The blue shows the uh, PPIC, and S it shows the uh, SPIC. Um, Maybe another sample, another one. Can run this through them. I'm just putting a rent in here so people are seeing different results, different um, data set, uh, data samples in their code Um Yeah, basically, this is the waveform work we're going to use for prediction. Excuse me. And in the second, second section, we're using this particular transformer for batch predict pick face picking. And there are six pre trained models from Sasbench we're using. Uh, original, which is the one from the Mozavi paper. Uh, ETHZ is a um, pre transfer, uh, not transfer pre-trained model using the ETH dataset instance from Italy. SEDC um, 
the Southern California. STAT is a global data set. And yeah, I see it's the one from National Earthquake Information Center, I think. And we are predefined this batch predict data um, array that stores the prediction from earthquake transformer. Um, there is a two here hard coded because uh, you are having different prediction from this transformer for P wave and S wave. They're literally different branches, but where uh, for simplicity, we're just putting them together. Um, we iteratively um, loop over all the pre-trained model, um, do the prediction and save it here. So this one is probably the, uh, the step that takes longer time. But since we only have 100 samples, it should be fine. Yeah, for memory concern, because we are running on Colab, it's really a tiny cloud instance that um, you could easily get out of memory problem if you are running a relatively bigger job. So I, I'm just putting this uh, memory cleanup commands here. So for each of these pre-trained models, uh, the scripts um, basically says bench, pre says bench from pre-trained will pull the or download the weights from the, their remote server and we will do the prediction and the grouped uh, result is of shape 2, 6, 100, 600. Um, here, two basically means uh, we have two branches. One is for P prediction as a uh, second is for S prediction. There are six pre-trained model, uh, which gives you the, uh, the second dimension. There's 100 sampling, uh, a time, time window sample. And each of these prediction is of shape 2000. Uh, it's a time, like a time series. Um, yeah, we can plot at some of these prediction results. So this is the, uh, the panel in the middle is still the raw waveform and the blue and red dashed line here is a cataloged p pig which is basically um, picked by the analyst um, and in the above and below panel we're showing the uh, prediction from uh, from the pre-trained model the highlight part basically gives you higher uh, confidence um, for example, here instance basically indicates there are some high confidence peaks uh, in uh, in the in this time exit, uh, in this time, and basically NEIC probably is not showing some clear sig predictions here. Mm, this is for the P wave, and it's similar for the S. Um, you see different prediction model might shift it in the time uh, regards about. Uh, where this uh, face picks are located. Um, we can maybe plot another one. My hard coded here. Yeah, no, I'm just using the red ink. Yeah. So yeah, this uh, looks like a pretty strong uh, higher SMR. So you can you can randomly play with some with the results here by just keep running this simple, uh, the same cell. Okay, so this then is the part we're getting into the ensemble calculation. So uh, basically we define the parameter for maximum, uh, ensemble maximum and ensemble semblance. It's the same parameter we're using in the previous uh, lecture, uh, but yeah, I just run. so for each of this time window, we are calculating its ensemble uh, maximum and ensemble semblance. So uh, it's a uh, it's a calculation should be uh, independent to each other, uh, and we're using this for loop. So it might take some time. 
it should be quick. And after that, we're get using a, like a trigger um, to get uh, the peak uh, where this um, prediction is located at. Because um, basically here, we're only seeing the prediction uh, like a probability, but you, you finally need to extract a single time index that where this peak is located at. And we're using this trigger together with the threshold to, to, to finally get uh, where the peak is located at. Can continue to plot some of this waveform. Oh, this is not a, yeah, you see probably it's a pretty high SR, uh, low SR. Um, yeah, so showing the uh, prediction from all six pre-trained model on the results from the ensemble maximum and results from the ensemble semblance. Because uh, since this is a data set and we have the catalog P and S, I'm showing this DT, um, basically the, pick, uh, the difference between the peaks and the catalog peak, um, can try to compare them. Um, and yeah, oh, I'm not sure what I can do. Yeah, sometimes it works good, sometimes not. Mm, looks like a good pick here. But, and this is for P peak. We can also go to S peaks. Um, you see different pre trained model have uh, dramatically different prediction uh, performance here. And if, if it shows not a value, basically showing that, uh, that this pre trained model does not exist the, the, the peaking threshold um, 0.05 in this case. So, uh, uh, prediction with the original pre um, weight stat and NEIC basically does not give a, uh, a basically doesn't give a trigger here. And now we are also using uh, getting to the next step of using a meta meta picker. Mm, we we pre submitted a, a pre trained model into the GitHub repository. So you can uh, download the weights here using the stub get function uh, command and basically define this uh, ensemble regressor. Um, it's a convolution neural network and you can use it for the met ensemble meta learner picking. Uh, yeah, so basically what we are doing here is using this ensemble semblance as a trigger. Um, if uh, if this ensemble semblance being triggered, we will extract a, like a time short time, shorter time window, probably 2000 time sample and send it into this meta learner. And meta learner will do another prediction to extract where the picks it's probably located, look at it. It's more, more like a regression. Um, so uh, note that the figure on the back, this black block uh, in um, within this red frame is what we are sending into the meta learner. And the yellow, uh, the blue dashed line here is is the one where uh, uh, is a P peak being outputted from the meta learner. It's the same for the aspect, but the prediction is mostly dependent. So if you have a P being triggered from the ensemble semblance, you send it to the meta learner and for prediction. But if SNR is really not good and the ensemble semblance is not being triggered, we are not sending the prediction to the ensemble meta learner uh, for the S prediction. Let's see. There are more to plot. Um, yeah, later we can save the results um, to this metadata uh, CSV file for further analysis and probably write it locally. Um, yeah, this is basically uh, following the same uh, uh, data set, uh, data format that SetsBench is using for their open um, data, uh, data set. I kind of forgot to mention that. OK. 
Okay. But for now, I think the input and output are not well for Mantage. I think in future, we should uh, give it more like options and to make it uh, pretty flexible and based on different demands. Um, but for now, it's uh, you, you can change, I think, um, you know, right on your like uh, scripts you know, to format your data by yourself. But we will do it soon, I think. Yeah, that's a part for the prediction on the window data, uh, uh, window data set from Pacific Northwest Seismic, uh, Pacific Northwest. Uh, yeah, later I will move on continuous data. So, because this, this is basically a uh, window data that we exactly know there's a arrival um, or face on set being picked by some, by the analyst. But how about we get into continuous data that it's highly possible there's no uh, seismic uh, onset in a given time point. How we can deal with that? Um, to start with that, I'll just open another notebook. Mm. So there, are, you see there are actually two, uh, two notebooks. One is PBB204, another is UW SHW. These are two different uh, seismic seismic station from uh, very close to Mountain Headlands. Mm. I've just started with this PBB 204. I believe I have to run that again, I think. Yeah, before, uh, while this PBB is in store, we can just pull the iris out and see where the station is located at. So it's a PB plate boundary observatory. Mm, it's a borehole station and it's south of these mountain headlands. It's the most active uh, active part of the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Yeah, another station we're using in the other notebook is UW University of Washington. I searched up Mountain Highlands West, I think. It's um, it's located pretty close to the station we're using, uh, the B204, but on, it's on the west side of the volcano. Okay. Restart wrong time. Okay, similar things, define the uh, packages. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm going to try this CUDA, but if, if it, oh yeah, you're right. I had to change the runtime type GPU. Seems like Google Colab is providing this T4 um, GPU for, uh, for the Google Colab runtime. My apology, I had to run that. It's the time I really like. It's like the <laughs> nodes in the mountain heavens. It's pretty dense. Next day. What day? Oh, not yet. Anyway. Okay. Okay, we define the device to CUDA, CUDA. So don't put GPU, uh, I think it wouldn't work. Um, yeah, so we're, we submit a, a four hour mini seed to the 
GitHub repository, so you can read it using the ops file. Uh, let's see here. You can, uh, this is the uh, host station again. You can probably see some of these events uh, around here. It has EH12Z channel. And there are some baseline tests using this original pre trained model. So there's a time window we're using for a square transformer. It's still 6,000, which indicates a uh, one time, one minute time window, uh, something at 100 hertz. And there's a step length in that each of these time window have a 50% 50, 50 overlapping. And there's a L blind, a left blind or right blind, because we want to suppress some of the artifacts on the prediction of uh, on the other side of the time window. So it's like uh, 500 in case, uh, uh, basically uh, five seconds on both sides. And we're calculating the number of segments after we cut the continuous data into a shorter uh, time window. And yeah, there's a base train, baseline trained. We're using this from pre-trained function um, and try to classify any possible uh, face arrivals using uh, this earthquake transformer. Should be pretty quick. Okay, basically it says, well, I find one P arrival and one S arrival around 2.30. Uh, let's go back. 230 should be this one, right? The the biggest one. Okay. Um, there is another transfer learned fan transformer using the um, our pin depth data set, and we have put the weights here. Um, we can download it still from the package, and using this pre from pre trained uh, pin depth function. Yeah. Well, one more actually, pretty close to the same same time actually, still two thirty two. Could be a hidden uh hidden one inside of this. But you see it's, even the pre transfer learning model is not getting uh, most of this um this events. And then we are get, getting to the ensemble face picking part. Um, we, we still cut and predict down the time window similar to what we are doing for the PNW data set uh, in the previous um, tutorial. Um, we still define this window using the standard deviation normalization and maximum normalization, taper it. Um, so each of these uh, data for prediction have the shape of 479, which is the total number of time window within this four hour continuous data. And still the three components and each of the time window is one minute at 100 Hertz. Let's do the prediction. This, this one probably would take most of the time, but it's using GPU, so not sure, let's see. Oh, it's actually it's already down. It's pretty quick. Yeah, basically you see the GPU RAM is getting. Hmm. Okay, so the R three uh, no R six pre trained model has finished their prediction on the R four hundred seventy nine time wind, small time window and gives the prediction. Uh, and we will need to stack them or concatenate them because these are individual time window, right? We still want to have a like a continuous 
time series that uh, even though it's just a prediction, uh, prediction probability. So we stack them. And so just plot everything here. Um, yeah, so the time x, time x here is a, is a sample index and the y axis is a prediction confidence. Basically it's showing the p uh, prediction. Um, there could be a peak from the stat model saying that there are high confidence, there should be a p wave arrival. Same for the NEIC here, um, SEDC in red, um, agree with the ETHC, you can see uh, there's a tiny, uh, show, tiny, a little higher than the SEDC pre-trained model. Um, it's pretty kind of noisy, right? <laughs> You, could, you you don't really see clear phase arrival um predictions, but yeah, let's get into the ensemble calculation. Um, the sum function is still the similar. It's actually the same as the previous section, but we are moving uh the time window from one minute to four four hours. Let's see. Yeah, as you can see here, um, I would just emphasize that the, this ensemble calculate, calculate is independent to um, P wave and S wave. So um, basically you can, uh, the zero indicate the P wave calculation and the S one for S type of, sorry. Okay, this figure is still the, the one we're getting from the um, from all the pre-trained model. Um, and the second panel is basically the maximum, it's extracting the, one of the maximum prediction from our pre-trained model. Um, and there's an ensemble sam semblance being calculated much, much cleaner. Um, if you highlight the one that has the actual rival and um, and also this one, although it does not have a, a really, really high um, prediction, prediction confidence. Mm, there's another for S. Well, S uh, for the S wave, the ensemble maximum is already much cleaner um, and similar for the ensemble semblance. And and still we're using the threshold mechanism to um, to to find those picks that exceed um, a specific time uh, picking threshold uh, defined as P threshold and S threshold here. Basically it says the ensemble semblance are finding four P picks and five S picks. And we're also preparing another CSV file which is a manual pick uh, by the analyst for this specific station PB, uh, B204 at this specific date. So we're preparing all phases av available um, from the station at this date. And we can try to look at what's uh, like the event being detected by our, by our method and the catalog method. Um, so you see there's a waveforms in black and in gray. Basically it's saying that if we find a, uh, if we, if our method find a peak that has a, uh, that's really close to any known catalog peak, actually it's, um, I think it's DT. 
yeah, less than one second, we will just plot it as a gray waveform, meaning that can, uh, network also find it. If it is in black, meaning that we don't find any um, pics in the, from the network catalog, at least within one se one second. So you're seeing that um, we're finding some of these new, potentially new events at this time, like really, really early uh, relative to this time series, 143. Um, yeah, we have the catalog pick around this time. And this is definitely a, a, a bit, relatively big one, I think, big event. Uh, in, in, around the volcano, actually. Um, the same can be made, the uh, same as plot can be made for S. Um, you can see uh, the black one is the one we don't find close pick from the network. Um, and the gray one is the one we have to find similar. Um, this one um, could be something, but it's hard to say because given the SNR S signal to -S ratio here, um, this one is the same. It's hard to analyze, but could be potentially if we can find uh, other picks in similar stations, we can potentially associate them and filter this put uh, picks out or you know uh, associated them into a common uh, event source. And we can also still using this meta learner to do the face picking. Um, still grab the weights from the packages. And we are actually using this um, detect triggered wave uh, waveform from the ensemble semblance as the input. So we're, we're using this ensemble learner to predict on this um, small time window, this one, basically from 1000 to 3000 since we're anchored the arrival at 2000 sample in this plot. Okay. Yeah, so basically it's saying that still for this raw waveform, this is a prediction from all um, six pre-trained model. And we send this block um, um, within the red frame into the meta learner, and the meta learner gives us a pre uh, the prediction of the phase arrival and this blue dash line around around here. It's probably a little earlier than the than than this SEDC pre model and ETHC. Uh, yeah, it can be. The same can be made for S wave. Oh, it looks pretty nice actually. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So we can also save this pre uh, the results uh, into a Panda framework uh, for further analysis because it says uh, picks from the from the UW SH should be PB station actually uh, at this date. Um, I think that that's it will be the same for the UW uh, SH dub station. Um, basically, it's, it is another uh, workflow. It's the same workflow actually. Uh, I can just copy here, open notebook. Yeah, basically it, it, it shares the shares the same framework, um, but the only difference is that um, we're using uh, data from another station on the surface. It's not a borehole station, and it's a uh, HH a high a high gain. This one should be short period, I think. I'll just go on this one.
Oh, so I noticed that there are some no NVIDIA driver on your system error in the Slack channel. So uh, when you launch the Google Colab, you will need to in go to the runtimes, change your runtime type in the hardware accelerator. You need to specify GPUs. Um, otherwise, Google Colab will not uh, will not allocate any GPUs to your uh, to your notebook. Okay, too many sessions. I'll, I'll, I'll stop this one. Well, it's free. You don't need to pay for it. So. Makes sense. Still too many? I think only, only one. Really? Is they are providing A100 and V100? Probably you will need to pay for that. I want to get it like to premium projection. Okay. Okay. Restart runtime. Import packages. So we're still using the CUDA for auto face picking, and we're using a UW station, uh, HH channel, still uh, 100 something rate for our data. Uh, this one station on the surface, I think it's kind of noisier than the borehole station. Using this, we're using the same parameter, um, one minutes of prediction time window, with five hundred uh fifty percent overlap, bind five seconds on both end of the time window, and we can try to build a baseline prediction using this original model. Ah, oh, mm, this. It's kind of awkward. Uh, the original face uh, pre-trained model is not giving uh, face predictions um, on this pre uh, on this training years data. But let's see how the transfer learned model works. Oh, still not that good. Actually, it's uh, two thirty one. Um, probably around here because we're using the same data, uh, same time period, uh, with the previous, uh, previous prediction, uh, pre previous tutorial. So ideally, th this event could be seen in, in these stations that are not actually far away from each other. Um, so we're just using the ensemble face picking and pick a try. Uh, we'll switch the channel order. Um, pre-processed time window into centered and maximum normalization, taper it. Um, we get 400, still the same number, 479 um, time window. Let's do the prediction. It's kind of interesting because is that true we spend most of the time down downloading this weights because if as long we has we have the weights being downloaded already it takes less than one second to do the prediction and if we need to download the weights on the fly we're doing the prediction it takes much longer time it's weird
now we're fin finishing with a prediction on 479 time window and we still we can't keep them. Okay, um, yeah, that's a random, uh, not random, but prediction from all six pre-trained model and we compute this ensemble maximum and semblance. You mm -hmm. could you take a look uh, on their Slack? There's uh, issue, I think, on the window uh, event, um, the window events, the tutorial, encounter the issue, and with um, all of the nouns, yeah, you can take a look in the, in the Slack. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's something I haven't get um get into before I'll, I'll try to rerun that notebook and reproduce this book later yeah yeah thanks for thanks for letting letting me know this i'll just finish the rest of this notebook quick yeah, yeah we can finish this and jump to that one to sort out so this is showing the uh, pick pick from the pre-trained model ensemble maximum and the ensemble semblance uh, for the P and here's the S wave. Might be something actually. And this uh, ensemble is giving four P arrival and four S wave arrival. And let's just compare with the catalog, maybe. Uh, oh, it's hard to to say it's really something for this specific sample, but this could be like surface vent, I think. This is in the catalog, in the catalog for S. Um, it's hard to see still for this specific event staying, but this could be something, could be a seismic event. Yeah. This way we can, as mentioned in the previous tutorial, we can try to associate it, um, the picks from different station and filter out some of this false detection. Mm, yeah, that's uh, like the process afterward of this face picking workflow. Yeah, the QC always, I mean, challenging. Um, you may need uh, the manual inspection or, you know, maybe association may help. Probably an multiple band can help as well. And if you fit to the different fixed bands and to look at, maybe there's more, you know, it's obvious to, to see whether or not this is uh, the event you want. Yeah. Mm, so the same we're sending this uh, data to the meta learner and I see this in pre-trained model is really confident there could be some face of rival here, same as ETHC, but not that confidence. Um, not clear f signal from instance, original, stat and NEIC, but uh, we simply do the uh, ensemble picking here somewhere around here it's for the s and the rest is same you can save it as a csv for further analysis okay 
And yeah, that's a, that's a part for this continuous data uh, prediction. Uh, let me know if you in, still encounter any problem. I'll try to debug at the same time uh, running maybe uh, on the collab. Sounds good. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much, uh, so we have some uh, simple dem demonstration to show um, the early stage of the ANOP and we really see some encourage uh, results. So definitely, and there's uh, improvement room. And so when we will work on and to make more functions and everything should be formatted better. But now it's, uh, it's pretty, I think, um, uh, the, the early like the stage of this uh, tutorial. So, uh, sorry, there the package and I will make it better. We will work on, work further. And Ilu, could you like to jump to the, um, the event waveforms? I think uh, some people yeah. encountered some problems. Yeah, since Especially, this environment has been, has yeah. been stopped, I'll probably need to restore it. So Chipping so said um, there's no peak. I, I think for this event prediction, there's no randomness. So everyone should are supposed to have the same results. That's where, uh, uh, let me run that again.
plotting this way forward. Prediction, just met at picker, waits. Uh, it's kind of weird because I don't. So, um, FedEx, would you mind just simply restart your runtime and uh, maybe run the notebook from startup? I'm sorry for inc this incident. Or any clues that helps reproduce uh, uh, that that box, maybe. Is Phoenix able to unmute uh, himself and then? Oh, sorry, I was typing in the in the Slack. Oh. Uh, yes, I closed the notebook and uh, I open again the, just to be sure. And but before running anything, I changed to GPUs, but the error still is appearing. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, I see you posted it. Yeah, that. It's weird. Um, would you mind would we just um, private message about this box and try to debug what's happening to you on the back end, maybe? Because I think we kind of run okay. out of time for this session. Thanks for your, for your patience. Sorry about that. No, no, no. Do the opposite. Thanks for sure. your patience. You are the one who is teaching us. So I'm sorry for bothering you. So Felix, and I, I think uh, you not necessary to reopen your notebook. You just run twice in front of the very beginning. And I think the, post, the, the question you posted last, and it should be resolved. Because this is the issue and from the obvious point, it's not loaded where, so you cannot uh, use that to load the data. So not necessary to, to close the notebook and it just run from the beginning. Oh, actually, sometimes there is another problem uh, before the cell. There's a, not a number problem. Is that the one you are looking at this is now? Uh, I mean, the, the, the last post from Phoenix. So uh, the loading with uh, the- oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Not the one that you're working on. Okay, I'll just start, stop the sharing here, maybe. Okay. Maybe I should stop recording because this is the last part of this uh, today's session. Yes, um, you want me to do that? It's, I okay. didn't see.